This video is about rules or properties of logs. The log rules are closely related to the exponent rules, so let's start by reviewing some of the exponent rules. To keep things simple, we'll write everything down with a base of 2, even though the exponent rules hold for any base. We know that if we raise 2 to the 0 power, we get 1. We have a product rule for exponents, which says that 2 to the m times 2 to the n is equal to 2 to the m plus n. In other words, if we multiply two numbers, then we add the exponents. We also have a quotient rule that says that 2 to the m divided by 2 to the n is equal to 2 to the m minus n. In words, this says that if we divide two numbers, then we subtract the exponents. Finally, we have a power rule that says if we take a power to a power, then we multiply the exponents. Each of these exponent rules can be rewritten as a log rule. The first rule, 2 to the 0 equals 1, can be rewritten in terms of logs as log base 2 of 1 equals 0. That's because log base 2 of 1 equals 0 means 2 to the 0 equals 1. The second rule, the product rule, can be rewritten in terms of logs by saying log of x times y equals log of x plus log of y. I'll make these base 2 to agree with my base that I'm using for my exponent rules. In words, this says the log of the product is the sum of the logs. Since logs really represent exponents, this is saying that when you multiply two numbers together, you add their exponents, which is just what we said for the exponent version. The quotient rule for exponents can be rewritten in terms of logs by saying the log of x divided by y is equal to the log of x minus the log of y. In words, we can say that the log of the quotient is equal to the difference of the logs. Since logs are really exponents, another way of saying the same thing is that when you divide two numbers, you subtract their exponents. That's how we described the exponent rule above. Finally, the power rule for exponents can be rewritten in terms of logs by saying the log of x to the n is equal to n times log of x. Sometimes people describe this rule by saying when you take the log of an expression with an exponent, you can bring down the exponent and multiply. If we think of x as being some power of 2, this is really saying when we take a power to a power, we multiply their exponents. That's exactly how we describe the power rule above. It doesn't really matter if you multiply this exponent on the left side or on the right side, but it's more traditional to multiply it on the left side. I've given these rules with the base of 2, but they actually work for any base. To help you remember them, please take a moment to write out the log rules using a base of a. You should get the following chart. Let's use the log rules to rewrite the following expressions as a sum or difference of logs. In the first expression, we have a log, base 10, of a quotient so we can rewrite the log of the quotient as the difference of the logs. Now we still have the log of a product. I can rewrite the log of a product as the sum of the logs. So that is log of y plus log of z. When I put things together, I have to be careful because here I'm subtracting the entire log expression. So I need to subtract both terms of this sum. I'll make sure I do that by putting them in parentheses. Now I can simplify a little bit by distributing the negative sign. And here's my final answer. In my next expression, I have the log of a product. So I can rewrite that as the sum of two logs. I can also use my power rule to bring down the exponent t and multiply it in the front. That gives me the final expression log of 5 plus t times log of 2. 
One common mistake on this problem is to rewrite this expression as t times log of 5 times 2. In fact, those two expressions are not equal. Because the t only applies to the 2, not to the whole 5 times 2, we can't just bring it down in front using the power rule. After all, the power rule only applies to a single expression raised to an exponent, and not to a product like this. In these next examples, we're going to go the other direction. Here we're given sums and differences of logs, and we want to wrap them up into a single log expression. If I look at the first two pieces, that's a difference of logs. So I know I can rewrite it as the log of a quotient. Now I have the sum of two logs, so I can rewrite that as the log of a product. I'll clean that up a little bit and rewrite it as log base 5 of a times c over b. In my second example, I can rewrite the sum of my logs as the log of a product. Now I would like to rewrite this difference of logs as the log of a quotient, but I can't do it yet because of that factor of 2 multiplied in front. But I can use the power rule backwards to put that 2 back up in the exponent. So I'll do that first. So I will copy down the ln of x plus 1 times x minus 1 and rewrite this second term as ln of x squared minus 1 squared. Now I have a straightforward difference of two logs, which I can rewrite as the log of a quotient. I can actually simplify this some more. Since x plus 1 times x minus 1 is the same thing as x squared minus 1, I can cancel factors to get ln of 1 over x squared minus 1. In this video, we saw four rules for logs that are related to exponent rules. First, we saw that the log with any base of 1 is equal to 0. Second, we saw the product rule, the log of a product, is equal to the sum of the logs. We saw the quotient rule, the log of a quotient, is the difference of the logs. And we saw the power rule. When you take a log of an expression with an exponent in it, you can bring down the exponent and multiply it. It's worth noticing that there is no log rule that helps you split up the log of a sum. In particular, the log of a sum is not equal to the sum of the logs. If you think about logs and exponent rules going together, this kind of makes sense, because there's also no rule for rewriting the sum of two exponential expressions. Log rules will be super handy as we start to solve equations using logs.